Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today is fucking St. Patrick's Day, so you know what that means. It's time to get a little shit on our shoes. Cause today I'm looking at Leprechaun Returns, the eighth film in the Leprechaun series, which was released on the Sci-Fi Channel in 2018. Like the 2018 Halloween film, Leprechaun Returns is a direct sequel to the original Leprechaun movie, ignoring all the Vegas-bound, space-faring, hood-dwelling adventures in between. And definitely ignoring the abomination that Hornswoggle played in the reboot. Ugh. Although actor Lyndon Porco replaces Warwick Davis in the titular role, it's meant to be the same being who's been trapped in the same well that he was fuck you Lucky charms into 25 years prior. We all know I have a complicated relationship with Leppy Boy, and in my kill count for the first film, I set up the series by saying it was a cavalcade of crap without anything redemptive to it. Before we hit up the sequel, let me just come out and say that I've since come around to appreciate the little shit and all of his so bad it's goodness, except Leprechaun 4 in space, which can still fuck off forever. And so it was with mixed but hopeful emotions that I went into Leprechaun Returns. Like, sure, it's a Leprechaun movie, and sure, there's no Warwick Davis, who was always the best part of the series, and sure, it premiered on the Sci-Fi Channel. Wait, where was I going with this? There's gotta be something promising about it. I don't know, maybe the kills. Let's find out and get to them. The movie begins with a stylized recap reminding us of what happened at the end of Lep 1, when the green little shit got a little melty and fell into a well. But now it's 25 years later and he's ready to title card, back in action. Our heroine this time through is Lila Jenkins, the daughter of Jennifer Aniston's character Tori Redding from part 1. This familial connection is probably why Lila's already having nightmares about our nasty Leppy boy. Where's we go? Lila has just arrived in Devil's Lake, North Dakota to help her sorority at Laramore University greenify an old house. In fact, THE old house from the original film, which the sorority owns now for some reason. Also, I can appreciate the joke that her sorority is AU, the chemical symbol for gold. Nice touch there. Lila gets to the house from the bus stop by hitching a ride with Ozzy, played by Mark Holton, reprising his role from 25 years ago. Mark Holton was also Francis in Pee Wee's Big Adventure, one of the best movies, and I'm glad he's back because he immediately shows that he's still got great comedy chops. Are you Irish? No. No. Oh. Just a fan of the culture? Not at all. For that matter, Taylor Spritler is also very natural and funny as Lila, and is probably the best part of the movie. I'm hoping to see more of her in the future. When Ozzy discovers Lila's lineage, he asks how her mom is doing, only to find out that Tori died the year prior. I'm sorry. She was nice to me. He drops her off at the house, stink eye in the old well the whole time, but since he accidentally drops his phone while unloading Lila's luggage, he has to head back to the house later. When he does, he winds up getting sprayed in the face by some green well water that apparently infects him with WEP GUY. That little belly burster gets to work fast and tears his way out of Ozzy's torso limb by limb, rebirthing himself and leading into his first shitty joke of the movie. Papa! Ha, <laughs> wouldn't have expected anything better from you, Lep. Ozzy dies pretty quickly from the green section and gives us a healthy dose of gore in the process. Sad to see him go so quickly, but don't worry, Mark Colton's not done in this movie quite yet. Our love to hate him little shit finds the gold piece that Ozzy swallowed in the first movie and sets off to claim the rest. 25 years then? I've got a lot of killing to make up for. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I guess we're back in this bitch. Lila, a new student at her university, meets her sorority sisters for the first time and learns that this house they're greenifying currently has no power, no internet, and no cell phone service. Not a single luxury. Her sorority sisters consist of Katie, played by Ash vs. Evil Dead's Peppy Shanuga, who's very friendly and super smart, Rose, the self-appointed leader of the sorority's greenification efforts, who's so neurotic it seems like she's always on the verge of a nervous breakdown, Time to get to work. <laughs> And Meredith, your typical stoner party girl. We can be socially conscious and get shit-faced. They aren't mutually exclusive. Lucky for us, Meredith brings a couple of dudes over so this movie can have a higher kill count. There's Andy, a real stupid dum-dum whose toxic relationship with Katie dumbs her down in return. We're raising myotonic goats for their milk and soil aerating because the nitrogen in their... <clears throat> it's gonna be like totally kick-ass. 
You do have a great ass. And Matt, a wannabe filmmaker who apparently fancies himself the next Joe Francis. Break out the steel drums, am I right? Especially since Lila's talking about her mom, who spent her whole life being terrified of monsters and then got cancer and died. Send that home video into Bob Saget. After Meredith makes fun of Lila for her dead crazy mom, you know, as you do, Lila goes to bed and has nightmares of zombie Ozzy. While in the kitchen, Katie and Andy get drunk and horny. Only you could make cleaning look so filthy. Stop it. Trying to clean. Okay, maybe I'm just an old man at this point, but that sounded more infantile than sexy to me. Trying to clean. Yeah. The next morning, Lila discovers that the basement is totally flooded. Best get on out that house swamp now. It's got a nasty infestation of water lamps. I love the smell of me go. Nah, shut up, dude. I wasn't leading into an audio clip there. Outside, Katie and Andy pull a real Jimmy Carter and install a solar panel on the roof in a scene with a pointed reversal of the gender roles we saw in the original film. Actually. You're supposed to drill it straight down, otherwise it might get loose. Meanwhile, Matt is being less than useful, flying his drone around and capturing video of a miserably hungover Meredith. He eventually goes to help Lila get a water cistern to drain the house with, and while they do that, Lep tries to use his magic to pitchfork Lila in the butt. But it fails because his magic is currently underfunded by gold. He determines that killing will somehow make his powers grow, so he sets out to claim another victim in the form of this mailman, after appearing in the mailbox and pulling the dude's head into it. Lep runs and hops into his truck, and although I don't know how he's reaching the pedals there, he drives it back to run the postal worker over, crushing his head that's still stuck inside the mailbox. Not bad, you gross little bastard. And you know what? I like the fragile sticker bit. It's perfectly stupidly funny. And in even more good news, since this movie's staying faithful to the original, Lep's got his shoe fetish back. So before he gets back to work, he makes sure to clean the mailman gore off his kicks. Matt tries to flirt with Lila and tell her about his filmmaking dreams, but she gets spooked by a zombie Ozzy reflection in a broken mirror. Sorry, I just thought I saw the taxi guy, but dead. I don't know why I just said that. Later on, after comparing himself to David Lean, he notices something in his drone footage. Weird. What is that, a rabbit? What is what? There's literally nothing in that footage. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Come on, Lep Returns. Don't be like an asylum movie where you're always talking about what you see but not showing it to us. That night, in Lila's room, she's visited by the leprechaun after he comes out of a giant stuffed bear. This can't be real. Do I look like a figment of imagination to you? No, you look like an ankle licking weirdo. What the fuck, dude? Lila realizes this pervert is the monster her mother always talked about, especially after he starts whining about wanting his gold back. He tries to take her gold necklace, only to get burned by it for some reason, and then the power in the house goes out because Andy was trying to blow up an air mattress. Stupid Andy. No matter, Lep can still perv on Lila in the dark, talking about watching her in the shower and shit. Oh, you're disgusting! But in a sexy way, right? Okay, that got an actual laugh out of me. When he reappears, Lila knocks his head off, but he simply fixes himself up, gives the obvious great head joke, and runs away. He eventually comes across drunk-ass Meredith in the kitchen. Uh, I think I'm having alcohol hallucinations. Yeah, that's not a thing. She takes a selfie with him, which is kind of funny, I guess, and then he asks her if she'll help him find what he wants. Meanwhile, Lila has wound up outside with Matt and Rose, who don't believe her little leprechaun tail until Meredith runs outside with pictorial evidence. Hey, could be a crackhead. And who, who got a hold of the wrong stuff? Whoa, what? Did they just, yo, you know the mobile Alabama leprechaun video? To me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. Who else in the leprechaun say yeah? Yeah! I mean, I referenced it right off the bat in the OG Lep kill count. The movie begins with, well, to me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. Who else seen the leprechaun say yeah? And this shirt that Chelsea made for me is also a nod to that wonderful, wonderful video. This amateur sketch resembles what many of you say the leprechaun looks like. Well, Rose's line just directly referenced that video too. Could be a crackhead. You got hold to the wrong stuff. It could be a crackhead. And who, who got a hold of the wrong stuff? Props for that self-awareness, Leprechaun Returns. I tip my hat to you. Out back, Andy's draining the lizard when Leppy Boy walks up to him. Another selfie ensues. I can't decide if it makes that joke more or less funny. Maybe more, since Lep leans into it? And then Lep picks Andy up, which looks... well, that looks weird. He tosses him near the house and uses his resurgent magical powers to pull a real Ronald Reagan and strip the roof of its solar panel, which slices Andy in half vertically when it falls to the ground. Hell yeah, dude, that's what I like to see. I don't even care that the solar panel's not sharp. Stick that boy's body in a biology classroom. Everyone sees the murder go down, and Katie gets real upset, although she does admire Lep's fashion choices. He seems a little too refined, though. I mean, he wears that 
freaking jaunty hat. I fucking love that line. They realize the keys to the car are inside the house, so while Leppy Boy is busy cleaning up shoes and making jokes about Crocs that are like 10 years too late, Lila and Meredith sneak back inside and grab them. But then Meredith tricks Lila into the basement and locks the door behind her, cause turns out the drunkest sister in the sorority made a deal with Mr. Leprechaun and promised to help him get Lila in hopes that he'd leave the rest of them alone. Meredith runs back outside and lies to the others that Lila was killed, then says they need to leave now before they wind up dead too. So they get into the car. You should get out of here. He's probably really close by now. <laughs> What? How did nobody else see him in there? Katie was the last one to get in the car. They knock him out and drive away in their electric car at a snail's pace. That's the car of the future? Sad. Damn, this movie's really sticking to these decade too late jokes, huh? Lila, stuck in the basement, runs into zombie Ozzy again. Only turns out he's more of a ghost, not a zombie, which he gestures to her because he can't talk. Maybe because of all the maggots he's dripping? Ew. She gives him some saran wrap to help with his torso hole, and hey, seems to do the trick. In return, he helps her by indicating the basement wall. And behind the names of the characters from the first Leprechaun movie, Lila finds a secret treasure map that was stowed away. Yar. The map also mentions that Clover are Lep's weakness, so now that Lila knows how to face him, let's get on out of this basement. No, uh, go Zazi, I can't do that. Instead, she has to use a hammer, and while she escapes, her sorority sisters realize that Meredith lied to them about Lila being dead. The others want to go back to help her, but before they can turn around, Lep flies up to them, riding Matt's drone and being a little shit. They ram into him and send him face first into a tree branch, which is pretty cool. But then they follow suit and crash their own vehicle into a tree as well. Aw, oh, poor tree. I'm actually surprised they don't get out and hug it. In the woods, they find Ozzy's body, all torn open from his lepectomy. And speak of the little green tumor, here he is, using his magic to, uh, trip people, I guess? Meredith reminds him of their deal, which was apparently that he wouldn't lay his hands on her, and with wording that specific, obviously he's gonna kill her through a loophole. So while the others head back to the house, Meredith runs away, only for Lep to slow her down using sprinklers. <laughs> what? Are they pumping out water at, like, fire hose pressure or something? It's a decently fun scene, with Lep conducting the wet affair to the second movement of Beethoven's Ninth, and he eventually kills Meredith by sticking a sprinkler faucet in her face and having it spray blood out like a sentinel ball from Phantasm. Watering crops with blood, huh? Feels a little Old Testament, doesn't it? On their way to the house, Matt finds his drone and tells the ladies that he'll try to slow the lep down while they keep heading back to Lila. He launches his drone and uses it to find the Green Menace, but Lep overrides the controls with his magic, and, well, you knew as soon as we saw this thing that we were gonna get a drone kill. Lights, camera, Decapitation? And that's exactly what we get. A drone decapitation. While Leppy Boy stands by, making limericks about my fan base. Audiences love you. lots of gore. They certainly do, you little bastard. They certainly do. Lila runs into Katie and Rose in the woods and shows them her treasure map, Yar, which they follow all the way to that pickup truck where Ozzy and his pint-sized friend Alex originally found the Lep's gold. This pot's looking pretty empty, though, because turns out Rose had found it earlier and cashed in some of the gold to finance the sorority's greenhouse project, although she did keep a log and was going to repay the pot later. We can just take it back to the cash for gold place and get it back. It's all the way in Bismarck. Yes, Bismarck, which is the capital of North Dakota, for those of you who should be studying for that geography test instead of watching YouTube videos. Since they can't just give the Lep his gold back, the girls make a new plan to defeat him, and they'd better do it soon. He's looking more and more like a real horror movie monster every minute. Katie recognizes Lila's Lep burning necklace as being fool's gold, which is an iron sulfide, and we all know that iron is a weakness of Lep's. It was established in Leprechaun 2, which I made fun of at the time, because I was an idiot and didn't know that iron's a historical weakness for fairies such as leprechauns. They make the pot look full, and Lila brings it back to the house so she can give it to Lep and he can just leave her the fuck alone already, God! After taking the pot, he demands that Lila stick around for the audit, during which he finds tampons underneath the gold, propping up the coins to make the pot look full. I just use a towel so I can cut down on my tampon costs. The other girls jump out and beat him down with pillows. This isn't a fantasy slumber party, what the fuck? And after they run away, Lila 
Carla puts her necklace around Leppy Boy and traps him in a square of iron items. Haiti replaces a fuse to get the house's power back on, while Rose fills a tub up with clover juice and a bunch of Edgar Wrightian action shots. While waiting on her friends, Lila is told by the leprechaun that he can bring her mom back from the dead if she lets him go. And the movie even gets a Jennifer Aniston impersonator to help him make the sale. I love you, Lila. She doesn't fall for it though, and instead sticks the hose to the water pump in his mouth. One shamrock shake coming up. I really wish someone heard that one. Rose turns the clover juice pump on, and Leppy Boy inflates like a balloon and explodes like he's Chucky at the end of Child's Play 2. Remember that in The Good Guy Factory? Damn, that was a good movie. The girls celebrate and then decide that the only way to kill Lep for good is by burning the remains. But while Lila and Katie build a bonfire outside, the leprechaun bits begin to reform into little steaming piles of shit. Rose, who's inside cleaning up the mess, drops her golden foreshadowing award on the floor and then turns around to find the tiny Leppy boys, who begin attacking her in a scene that pays homage to Army of Darkness, just with more bad jokes. Stop. It ends after they trip her with a broom handle and send her face first into that golden spade trophy, which impales her and comes out the back of her head. Not bad. Lila and Katie come back inside and find the leprechaun reforming to his full size in a very bubbly, very digital process. But the ladies realize that gold's a conductor, so while Lep is standing on top of what's left of his treasure, Katie electrocutes him with a frayed wire. How's that for energy efficient? They watch as the electricity surges through him and he goes up in flames, so that he can also rip off the ending of the original Child's Play as well. Oh, and just the hint of Nightmare on Elm Street there with those flaming footprints. Okay. Since the house's exits are blocked by flames, the girls go downstairs and start climbing out the very fake not glass window. The leprechaun comes down and tries to stop Lila, but she just tells him to, quote, eat a dick, ass baggins, and then kicks him back inside. I'm sure Token would be proud. The ladies escape and sit down together to watch a great house explosion, which is followed by a gushing green geyser. And looks like they're in the splatter zone. I told you we should have rented the ponchos. Ghost Ozzy appears one last time to wave goodbye to Lila, and after a random dude from the university shows up to drive the girls back to campus, a push-in on Lep's jaunty frickin' hat suggests he might not be dead after all. Show sure enough, the movie ends with him all back together again and hitching a ride to Bismarck. Population 72,000, 132,000 if you include the metro area. For 25 years, this Lep stayed in a slumber. How many kills did he wake to? Let's find out at the numbers. Only six people died in Leprechaun Returns, which is low, but still two more than the original. The victims included four men and two women, giving us a two to one ratio of dudes, and with a runtime of 93 minutes, we had a kill on average every 15 and a half minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Andy. I love a good vertical bifurcation, and I like that it used the solar panel they had set up earlier. As for Dol Machete, I just don't have one. All six kills were pretty fun. What am I supposed to give it to? The fairy punching his way out of a dude's torso? The fun musical sprinkler kill? All of them were pretty good. I don't know what to tell you, man. And that's it. Leprechaun Returns came out in 2018, and although it's a sci-fi movie, it's not even close to being the worst of the series. See which ones are the worst by rewatching my kill counts on them. Seriously, they didn't get a lot of love when I released them last year, but they're some of my favorite episodes. Until next week, I'm James A. Janice, and this has been The Kill Count. Happy St. Patrick's Day, and thanks for watching The Kill Count for Leprechaun Returns. I want to thank some patrons like Geneve, Brendan Darby, Davin Kane, and Will Wyland. This is one series where I can definitely say I want more. Yeah, he's a little shit, but fuck it, man. They don't have to be great movies. Just give us leprechauns killing people with magic. That's what was so good about this one, is it just had fun. Thanks, everybody. Be good people.